Praise the Lord. Gil Burgos here. Prophetic encounter once again. All right, we're going to be beginning our show today with some interesting information that um, I want to share with you guys today. Now, uh, just get myself together here a little bit. Um, I want to just begin by stating that this, this today's uh, show is not so much to to point fingers at anyone because uh, what people do uh, is things that people do that gets them into trouble these days. Now, basically, uh, I wanted to entitle this show today called Our Secret Sins, Our S Secret Sins. And I, I honestly believe that every person on the face of this earth has some si type of sin. They have a secret sin. I don't care who you may think you are. Uh, uh, you may think you're the most godliest holiest person walking on the face of the earth you may think uh, that you're nearly close to heaven as you can get and you know some people nothing wrong with growing in the faith and becoming more and more like Yeshua the Messiah more like Jesus but sometimes people come to a point in their lives when they think that they're uh, infallible and they think they come to a point that they're not going to make any errors you know to a point that you know they they I can't say infallible because some people you know a lot of people know they're not infallible but some people come to the point they feel that they they're beyond sinning and just because of a a position they may have or uh the length they've been saved they come to this thing that they feel that well you know I mean I once was like this and now I'm closer to God but you know the Bible teaches otherwise that you know because I've come to the point that I've learned that the closer I get to the Lord the more attacks I get from the enemy and how many know what I'm talking about and again as when I'm trying to emphasize today is not so much to point fingers at anyone but to let you know that that whatever we do in this life, we're going to be held accountable to it, whether it be now, at this life, being judged by the Lord, or in the future, one day when we stand before Him. The Bible says that every one of us shall stand before the judgment seat of Messiah Yeshua, of Christ. So you may get away with it, maybe, maybe for a time and season. You may get away with it for the rest of your life, maybe here on earth. God only knows why he may allow it to be that way, but eventually you're going to face the Lord and he's going to deal with your your stuff, your junk, your dirty laundry, however you want to slice and dice it. Um, I was trying to play some music here today, and I'm trying to see if it can stream, but I don't think it's playing. Uh, let me see if I can make an adjustment here and find out why. My music's not playing. I usually have music's in the background when I'm doing my show, as I guess you know to uh, give it in a little effect. But I don't know. For some reason, it's not working today. No big deal. Maybe it's meant to be that way so you can hear me clearer. But anyway, the reason why I came to this point, to this uh, topic, our secret sense on today's show and the prophetic encounters, because of. Of something that's been occurring if you have not heard or seen already on the news our wonderful governor uh, Mario Cuomo was caught in some kind of uh, indecent act harass sexually harassing accusing they've been accusing him allegedly of sexually harassing his staff and many women have come forward now he has come 
I guess he came clean so I'm somewhat and apologized. But interesting that more and more women are just coming out. It's like, I don't know, just to me, I find it weird that, I mean, when these things are happening, why aren't these women saying thing at the time? Why are they waiting like years later to just voice what had happened to them? And I think that's really a big mistake when you are being harassed in a workplace or or school or wherever uh, a gathering that you attend and someone is harassing you someone's bullying you someone is doing things to you that you're not pleased with that you hold on to these things and you don't do anything about it and you just sit there and just like they say suck it up and just wait but sometimes you know what we we can do we think things matters worse when we don't step up to the plate and just come forward with things that are really damaging us and have uh, repercussions in the long term. So I think after watching this video, maybe you can come to a realization that it hurts no one but yourself when you don't uh, tell people what is really happening in your life that is hurting you. But um, I'm not here to throw stones at anyone. Um, this is not the pot, like they say, call, calling the kettle black. It's not about that because we are all uh, capable of doing anything. The Bible says that all of us are capable of doing the things that we detest the most, the things that you say, I would never do that. You are capable of doing it. The Bible even says that Yeshua, Jesus, was tempted in every point yet without sin. So if he was tempted in every point, what makes you think you and I will not be tempted in every point, the most despicable, disgusting thing that you could ever imagine? You will be tempted maybe one day, and what will you do? But what we see here, the people in the world, they don't, some of them don't uh, think there is such a thing as evil. I mean, the Lord gave everyone a conscience so to know uh, in their heart what is good and evil but some people in these days have become numb to these things and it's the more and more I see especially these artists the more I see them the more and more wickedness I see in this world and it gets more and more provocative and more sensual and more sexual and it's like we have our young people watching these things and we see people who were most likely, again, you, that you thought would not do things, are doing them. And even on social media, we see p younger, younger people are just doing things that you would never imagine doing. Even when I was a child, I would never uh, even come that close to even think about doing these type of things that I see happening nowadays uh, on the in the earth. And what I see, again, on, online... I mean, it's it's a sad thing to see th that our, our children are just being so uh, affected and manipulated by media, especially social media. Uh, this TikTok thing that we see, we have to be very careful. It can be addictive, even more more addictive than anything I've seen. And I've seen people spend, not myself, I don't have an account. I looked at it and I found it be childish and I see people using it because people want to go with the latest thing. They want to be trendy. They they want to be just like everyone else. If people are want to people want to jump up and down, everybody else wants to jump and down. If people wants to join a certain uh social media platform, then people want to follow them. But what we see here, we're seeing that we have to be more of an example instead of following the crowd and becoming more like the world we have to be more like Yeshua more like Jesus and shun these things and we see these younger people on like I said before on, on TikTok and this thing I'm not trying to pick on it and bash this social media platform but it becomes habitual and we see people spending hours and hours scrolling through their phones and you know it's just like are, are people preparing themselves for the coming of the Lord, or are we just just wasting idle time and trivial things that mean nothing? 
because we're just looking for the next entertainment entertaining thing that can make us laugh and I'm all for that I'm all for laughter I'm all for having a good time but people are more concerned nowadays with just making themselves feel good and I know we're living in difficult times and the way things are in the world these days but we have to prepare ourselves and become closer to God more than we ever imagined because I, I every time I even walk out the door it just seems that things have gotten so bad and worse and worse and the more I, I the more I see the more I hear the more I watch the more I look the, when I go on my phone or my my tablet I just I'm just baffled and confused and saying why are we why is what's going on why are Christians just going along with what all this stupidity that people are involved with these days and instead of making ourselves stronger in the Lord many people have become more more like the world and weak in the faith and when things happen Yeshua had mentioned that a person that has a good strong foundation that when the winds comes and the storms comes the house which is your you you you're the house your temple uh, when when they have a strong foundation nothing can knock them down but when you have a weak foundation when the storms come and everything else your house will fall and that's what we see here we see a lot of people falling because of their not their foundation is either weak or has become weak or has become brittle it is not is not what it once was and I'm just speaking and sharing these things from the heart because I, I just going just going from what I've just again noticed and what I've seen and when we look in our political realms we see leaders who people look up to and trying to follow and that who are supposed to be examples and are not examples anymore because people lost respect for these men but to a degree because when this had happened to Mayor uh, Cuomo uh, they did a poll and they were saying asking people what do you think is the worst thing that this man had did is it he should he be blamed because how he handled people in nursing homes and COVID cases or there's another thing they asked him they asked the people you think it was because of this that he should be maybe uh, taken out of office or is because of his accu the accusations of him um, trying to hit on his staff so to speak and it was sad that that the most people were more concerned with how he tr uh, how he acted t uh, towards the COVID issues and not the issues when he was sexually uh, uh, advancing himself and making sexual advances towards uh, his staff and all that so uh, I just to show you where people's head is at these days they don't care to them it's like so what and um, it doesn't surprise me that we see that today that people are just saying so what and then it's when you look again in other f the foreign countries that that we see around the world that women don't have a voice and that women are being raped and mistreated and abused in certain countries it's like so what that they're, they're beneath the men and that is the furthest thing of the truth because when the Lord made Eve he took Eve out of Adam's side to become his helpmate not to be his doormat so women are not to be uh, treated as such they're supposed to be loved cherished and treated with respect but we cannot be like we see some nations who have this mentality that women are like that they're like dogs and they just be like pets or some something to that effect and and when we look in America we see America having the same views as far as women is concerned they are getting to that point it was like so what uh, the man of the hour hit on hit on you or uh, made sexual advances towards you so what get over it that's the attitude but what if it was your your family member member of your 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 mother or your sister or, or your cousin or aunt or whatever that was being harassed at work or school maybe maybe that would get your attention so you have to see it from that standpoint but my point of making this quick video is just to just to share something with you regarding those who think that just because they are trampling over the grace of God that they're going to get away with things that they do to people and especially when they do them against the people in the church so I did a Google search 
about secret sins. And I, I came up here with 15 Bible verses regarding secret sins. And I'm just going to read them to you and allow the Word of God to minister to you because I, I, I don't really have to say much when I read the Word because the Word will take care of itself and it will convict and it will reprove and it will bring what it needs to be brought to the heart. So in Proverbs 28, 13, it says, He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. Psalm 98, 90 and verse 8, You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Psalm 19 and 12, Who can discern his errors? Acquit me of my hidden faults. And then 2 Kings 17 and 9 says, The sons of Israel did things secretly which were not right against their Lord, their God. Moreover, they built for themselves high places in all their towns from watchtower to fortified, fortified city. Job 24, 16, it says, In the dark they dig into houses. They shut themselves up by day. They do not know the light. Isaiah 29 and 15 Woe to those who deeply hide their plans from the Lord and whose deeds are done in a dark place. And they say, who sees us or who knows us? Ezekiel 8 and, 8 and 12. Then he said to me, son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are committing in the dark? Each man in the room of his carved images. For they say, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Ephesians 5 and 12. For it is a disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret, speaking of the ungodly. And Christians sometimes do the same. Job 24 and 14, it says, The murderer arises at dawn, he kills the poor and the needy, needy and at night he is as a thief. Proverbs 7 and 8, Passing through the street near her corner, he takes, her, he takes the way to her house. Speaking of an adulterous man. Proverbs 7 and 9, in the twilight, in the evening, in the middle of the night, and in the darkness. Notice that all these things are done in the night. It's interesting. John 3 and verse 20, for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Romans 13 and 12, the night is almost gone and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and 11. Do not, do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. And finally, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 7, which says, For those who sleep do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. And then there's a few others here that you can read, but I'm not, for the sake of time, going to read any more because if you look at the subject of secret sins, you can go on and on and on of what, what you see in the Bible. But my point to make here is that when the governor, who has been allegedly accused of harassing these women at, at work, he thought by, by power and who he was that he can get away with things but he forgot that there's a God who knows all and sees all and judges all. So let the Christian be aware of these things and be alert and beware that, that whatever the Christian does, that we have an all-seeing, all-knowing God that one day will come to judge us for our actions if we do something that is uh, displeasing in his sight. And a lot of people may watch this and don't want to hear these things, but I give you these truthful words that you can just wake up some of you because some people have put these things behind them. As the Lord has said, they take my words and they put them behind them. Let us not be that type of person that takes the word of God and put it behind us, but let it be a mirror to us that we can see who we really are and who God wants us to be. I see as I even watch, as I watch the side of this who comes and goes on this feed, I'm able to see who comes in and comes out of this broadcast. And it's interesting when people are not 
being entertained or laughing and giggling and acting silly, then they don't find any interest sometimes in what you have to say because that's how the Lord, I feel, feels when, when He wants to declare truth to us because He loves us and He wants to show us things that, that will hurt us. We do the same thing. We, we push it aside because we feel that we know more, even more than God. And God is saying today in these latter days, beware of those who will just come to you and not declare truth to you, that will come to you and just say, it's okay to do certain things to an extreme. But little that we, you know that one day you will run out of, like they say, run out, your, run, your, run, your luck will run out, like they say, but there's no luck in the kingdom. But there's an old saying that your luck will run out. You know, and eventually, if you trample over, if we trample the grace of God, there remains no more a sacrifice of sins, but only a mere judgment, as it says in Hebrews, that we take what Christ has done for us on the cross and we trample over the grace of God. And, you know, even Paul says, shall we continue on sinning that grace may abound? Is this what it's all about, Christian, that you continue to, in, uh, do, uh, I'm not going to direct this towards you, but us, is this what it's all about, that we continue on sinning and, and, and take the grace of God for granted? And I'm guilty as well we we are all but god is saying to us today that we must to prosper it says if we can conceal our sins that we will not prosper and we are a people that want to prosper we want our families to prosper we want our children to prosper but how can we prosper if our lifestyle is displeasing the lord we have to clean up clean house as it says or clean up our act because listen if you look at the news and i know people watch the news every day do you think we're going to be able to get by this year with ease? We have so many things that have been thrown at us or being thrown at us day by day. If it's not one thing, it's the next, the other. So without the Lord, as even Yeshua said, we can do nothing. But let us keep him in our midst. Let us keep him in our heart. Let us keep him in our mind day after day and meditate on his word that we begin to renew our minds daily as it is called today that you will continue to do his work and his bidding and we will continue to to walk in the light as he is in the light and in him there is no darkness because if we are going to make any changes in the world then we must follow what he has told us to do so again not to throw stones at anyone not to put down the mayor of any leader this country or any other country but just to emphasize that just because you are in power if you have some kind of leadership role, does not mean you're exempt to God's judgment. It does not mean you can get by with things. It doesn't mean you can get away with things because eventually God will bring you into judgment for your sin. And God is going to stop you sooner or later than you think. And the enemy, what he will do, he will destroy your life, your testimony, and everything that you have built. He will try to strip it from you and take you down because sin is only pleasurable for the moment. But eventually it bites like a serpent. Even like people who drink, it says even the Bible that liquor is like that. But at the end result, it's like a serpent. It, it will just it will sneak up on you and you least suspect it. It'll it'll just bite you. You'll lose control. You don't have the the clarity of mind, and then you will do foolish things. So I pray and I hope that whatever I have shared with you to heart, it will share with you will go to your heart not just your mind. This is a little bit different from what I've done maybe in some time, but I felt in my heart today I, to do this type of broadcast on the prophetic encounter. And I'm not even sure if the music is even playing behind me. If it is, so be it. But anyway, I just pray to God that whatever was said today, that you will let it de sink deep into your heart, your soul, and your mind, and that you will become what you once was if you have straight away that you will walk once as you once walked when you first knew him so that you can become a part of what god is doing in these latter days god is looking for you to come to him and god is looking for you to get your act together christian and so we can become an example as a church as an ecclesia to the world because of the church is not an example to the world then who will be then who will they look to because 
We cannot look to leaders and presidents and governors because they too are fallible. They too sin. They too make mistakes. They too are full of errors and uncertainty and all kinds of doubt. They are human. They are not up and beyond any, anything else. Even the Pope. There's no hope in the Pope, as they say. So let's again, let's get back to business. Amen. And, you know, let's do what we know we have to do. I'm not here to preach to you so much, but you know what must be done. And if God is speaking to you through this message, I pray that you will make things right in your heart so that you will become what he uh, wants you to be. And he will be pleased with us, both of us, all of us, because that is God, what God is looking for in his children. Um, let me pray for you. And then I'll close. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that that you have given me this word to share with your people. I pray, oh God, that you will shine the light, not so much to uh, a reprimand, but to, with loving kindness, Lord, that you would draw them unto you, that they will come to you once again, Father God, and whatever they are doing in secret, Lord, that you would just remind them by your spirit that you are not pleased with their behavior and all of our behaviors that, that is not good father god so you would help us again by your spirit to walk as you walk and give us the strength give us the power lord as you said you would and give us the grace to endure give us the grace to obey and give us the grace to forgive lord we thank you lord for your word we in your precious holy name we thank you and we bless you in the name of, of our messiah sure we pray amen Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, for more information on Gil Burgos Ministries, please visit www.gilburgos.com or visit me on my radio show, www.propheticencounterradio.com. There you will have some Jewish music as well as teachings that, that I'm sure that you will be blessed by hearing and sharing. Amen. I'm out of time. And uh, until the next time I see you again, may the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, richly bless you. Shalom.